Hi everyone, this is your GM, Esther. Thanks so much for tuning in. We are so excited you're here. During our first couple of episodes, we encountered a learning curve with our video recording software, which resulted in laggy video. Don't worry, video quality significantly improves by our third episode, and our video and sound continue to glow up as we learn more. We wanted to let you know that episodes one and two will be great videos to play in listen-only mode as you're doing something around the house, or in read-along mode with the transcript on our website. Thanks so much for your patience. We hope you enjoy. Hi, y'all. Hi. Hey. Hello to our audience, whoever you may be. I am Esther Wallace, and I use she and they pronouns. And this is our first session of our new Pathfinder 2E campaign, which we are calling Chromythica. And I am going to be GMing this campaign, and I'm so excited. You can follow us on Twitter at Chromythica, and you can click or type on our link to our YouTube channel to refer all your friends to our lovely story. So I am going to ask my wonderful players to go around and introduce themselves. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Wonderful. Hello, everybody. My name is Feruz Rougeau. You can call me Faye if you like. I'm going to be playing Temerity. I use she and they pronouns. And this is going to be a lot of fun. I can go next. I'm Justin Brown. I use he, him pronouns, and I will be playing Ember, a puppy dog. We shall see how that goes. Sure, I can go next. I am David. I use he, him pronouns, and I will be playing Oom, a gnome sorcerer, and Oom's familiar, Nami, who is a pseudo dragon. So, yeah. Hi everybody, I am Alex. I use he and they pronouns and I will be playing Professor Z, an inventor who has come up with a contraption presently named Buster. Because he gets busted up. So I want to continue over a tradition that Justin does for us in Justin's campaign. And that is a warm-up question to help get into character and think about the headspace you might be in as your character. And the question I had today is, how do you mark significant beginnings in your life? Are we meant to think about this question or share with the class? Share with the class. With a smile, my friend. I don't know why, but I, when I heard marking, I instantly thought the dog should go next. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that too. But while, while Justin's thinking, uh, I guess for Oom, it's, it's a little bit of both. And oh, by the way, Oom is a polygendered, so interchangeably, she, her, he, him, or, or they is fine. But yeah, I think of, of Oom starting new journeys as twofold. Oom's always been kind of uncertain. And so they tend to approach things with that same sort of hopeful hesitance. And as part of that documenting new beginnings, there's always just that, you know, writing in, in their journal, thinking about life and just hoping for the best and really looking to the stars sometimes. The stargazing is something that 
they hold very dear and that they do very often as they think about where they're headed. Professor Z definitely has a glass of the finest champagne that one can acquire at the corner store when one has forgotten that one is about to celebrate a beginning and pick that up and uh, pour it into, you know, a glass or, or probably failing that a bug and, and have a nice mug of champagne. Um, Ember would probably say, mm, I begin the day with a snack and some time for fun. <laughs> I love this. Well, without further ado, welcome to Chromythica. I am so excited. Let's tell a story together. So it's difficult to say where a story really begins. Like so many threads coming together in a weaving, each thread connected to a spool, each spool the product of its own spinning, each beginning has a genesis of its own. And the wider the net of a story is cast, the more everything seems connected. The elders say that to chase down a beginning invites adventure. So we come into this story, not at its beginning, but as it converges in the gnomish city of Brasselwark. This most unusual cosmopolis is formally located in the nation of Cheliax under the jurisdiction of her infernal magistrix, Abrigail II, of the thrice damned House of Thrun. Less formally, it lies east of the Whisperwood, nestled in the foothills of the Aspidel Mountains at the mouth of the River Brassel. Many the human traveler finding themselves in Brasselwark for the first time will think it a very odd city, for no one building is like to another in style, and the whole city is painted and planted in vibrant colors that twirl and swirl and clash with each other's fierce hues, and even the streets of Brasselwark threaten to overwhelm most human newcomers. There seems to be no rhyme nor reason to these roads, and a wide thoroughfare can turn as suddenly to a small, twisting alleyway as a narrow lane can spit a pedestrian into a wide park with no paths at all. Brasselwark prospers as a center of research and innovation, both magical and mundane. The streets buzz with the carryings on and conductings of business and trade, ringing with the hammers of tinkerers and the incantations of wizards, and occasionally an explosion of moderate size. And the festivals, oh, the festivals, the celebrations, the jollifications and merrymakings and parades. Arguably the most famous of these is the annual Festival of Flight, where folk from far and wide come to honor and wonder at the innovation in the field of aerial arts and sciences. At the Festival of Flight, there are kites big enough to hold a grown human in flight, and hot air balloons, and gliders, and demonstrations of arcane and primal flight magic, and gold to be had by the plenty for those whose innovations and skill are deemed of interest to investors. But best not to get ahead of our place in the story. Let it be said that the beating heart of Brasselwark is made of the love of curiosity and becoming. And for one or two of you, it's also the place you call home. The particular morning we come into this story is one that blossoms soft and full of possibility. It's the kind of late winter morning that tweaks the tips of your ears as the steam rises from the river. But the light of the early morning sun looks so much like spring, you'll be tempted not to wear a scarf. It is the kind of morning that calls for nothing so much as it does, a freshly baked pastry and a hot drink to wake up the mind, particularly if you're a researcher. It being such a morning, Professor Z, you find yourself making your way to a local bakery you like to frequent. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your morning routine and what you look like, what Buster looks like. Set a scene for us. I 
think it's probably easiest to describe Buster. Buster is clinking and clunking along. I wouldn't exactly call Buster in the shape of a like robot so much as in the shape of a collection of legs that wander around kind of thing with various bells and whistles and steam pipes and whatnot protruding in different directions. Professor Z is wandering down the street. Well, wandering is probably the wrong word. Briskly walking, you know, with purpose for the morning, excited to start his his day of invention and creation and wearing, you know, something of a, of a longer coat that has a multitude of pockets in it that's maybe got some patchwork on different parts of it. He looks bright-eyed and and cheery and and ready to go for the day, Um, but clearly sort of the set of clothing he has is like his usual uniform outfit, not, you know, there's no um, variety necessarily from day to day. And he he briskly wanders down the street to to head up to the bakery and... uh, Buster sort of clinks and clatters along behind, uh, wobbly, uh, occasionally sort of pitching to one side and then another, but continuing to move uh, with his his good little legs ready to go. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, before too long, you see the familiar facade of Celestine Bakery which is a cozy building of royal blue brick and three high arching windows that kind of arch up on either side of the door. Um, So six windows in total, through which you can see a truly mouth-watering array of breads and pastries and goodies. And the door is, is large and yellow. And actually right now it's open. There's quite a long line of gnomes, a couple humans, even some dwarves waiting in line for their baked goods. Um, there's a large wooden sign hanging above the door that reads Celestine Bakery, painted in silver ink on a dark blue background. And the text of this sign is flanked by several tiny silver stars in an array around the letters and similar stars and a giant half moon are painted on the brick, the dark blue brick of the bakery walls. It's a two-story building, and you happen to know that the first floor is the bakery itself and their storefront, and then the second floor is a little bit of a quieter space that you can eat and chat with friends. So as you are going to be waiting in line for a good few minutes, you will notice another gnome approaching. Um, You won't have seen them before, and I'm going to ask Oom to describe yourself next. Um, we'll say you and Nami have gotten into town pretty recently, probably last night, and you've stayed in an inn and tavern called Lily Frost Tavern, which is right over the bridge as you cross the River Brassel and first arrive in the city. By the way, I brought you all to the map of Brasselwork. I think you should be able to see it now. Yes, I can see it. Beautiful. Okay. So you've woken fairly early and the proprietor of Lily Frost Tavern um, of course encouraged you to eat breakfast at the inn, but did tell you that when they're in a pinch, they will buy some very good pastries from Celestine Bakery and then would have directed you west through the city. Um, you are amazed by Brasselwork. You've been traveling around for a while. You've seen a lot, experienced a lot. But this city is like nowhere you have ever been before. It's bright and colorful. It's it's as if someone designed a city and then a force of chaos and curiosity and life just took it over and burst that design open and put buildings wherever it wanted. You see little alleyways that come to a dead end, not at a door, but at a wall or, or opening to a green vista. It really is amazing especially after growing up in Hermia, where everything has a certain order to it, a certain dignity. This place is is strange, and it somehow feels like a kind of home, like you get a, an echo of a home here. So why don't you describe yourself and set a scene for who Um is and who Nami is? Sure. So Um is a gnome sorcerer 
She's around two feet, eight inches tall, kind of short for a gnome, also kind of young. She's around her mid-twenties, uh, where the typical adult age is 40. And so she's definitely a lot younger and a, a lot more excited to just smell the smells and, and see everything. She has wild red hair. It's not uncommon to find grass or twigs in it because she's very used to just lying down in the grass and looking up at the stars. Um, kind of flighty, uh, definitely excited about all of the different colors, the different smells, kind of just following where her gnome nose takes her because uh, she's a sensate gnome and that gives her basically everything that's that's colorful or everything that smells wonderful is just more vivid to what she experiences and so um, you know she smells wonderful bread or, or, or just sees the the magic of just the different colors in the in the architecture I think that's just going to be really amazing for her for Nami, uh, Nami is a pseudo dragon uh, familiar of Um, but Um really sees Nami as more of a, a friend and basically a trusted companion. And so she's worked really hard to both give uh, Nami more independence and also uh, the ability to speak common or draconic depending on what Nami wants to do at any given time. But Nami tends to prefer to just be silent and just to uh, basically be more of a familiar where possible, unless that uh, urge to speak sort of rises up in him. So I, th I think as they explore the different areas, uh, Um's actually going to largely be following where Nami leads because part of uh, coming here was for the Festival of Flight. And part of the reason was, was because uh, she thought that Nami would appreciate just seeing the different things, seeing the different aspects of flight, and maybe possibly even meeting other pseudo dragons if, if that's available here. And so uh, she'll probably just be watching wherever Nami flies, uh, sniffing the different areas and seeing wherever that takes her. Can I butt in to say that I'm in love with Oom? Like already, I'm done, I'm out. I'm married to her on the astral plane. That's all, goodbye, thank you. I was reaching to roll a percentile dice, and I got totally distracted because I too am in love with Oom. Let's find this. Okay, as so I'm leaning out of frame to roll. Oh, oh, all right. You you generally feel that Nami is making his way sort of towards the bakery, but is taking you on a roundabout route, which is appropriate in Brasselark. And at first you're wandering through a section of the city uh, that's close to the river that seems to be like a bunch of homes constructed on parkland with occasional little paved flagged paths running through it. And then you abruptly arrive in uh, a district that is just cobblestones all the way, a lot of stone buildings. Smells a little sulfuric and you know, it's it's probably 7.30 in the morning, and suddenly you just hear a, a boom, and Nami probably scampers back to you like, whoa, what was that? The smell of sulfur gets a little stronger. Well, I mean, gotta see what that explosion was. Okay, is this gonna be the first roll of the game? I think it is. Okay. David, would you have Oom roll me a secret perception check? Sure. How do I do that? <laughs> I think if you if you drag your token onto the screen and then click on it, there should be a bar that pops up that has like secret various checks. I oh, I see. Got it. Oh yeah. You notice there's a nearby building. It's um, a couple stories, but actually fairly low to the ground for Brassel work. It's sort of protruding out of a, a tower, but they seem to be not exactly the same building. There's several, several entrances. And you look at it, you see a gnome sort of fanning themselves, got some soot in their long eyebrows. It seems like this is an alchemical explosion. Like maybe you've wandered into a district of alchemical labs um, and they just sort of cough. <coughs> wow, really got a good one. I think this is promising. Uh, 
immediately start pouring something else into a beaker. I'm gonna get closer uh, and actually sniff the air a bit. And be like, what are you? What are you doing? Um, their their window is open, and uh, they'll turn around. They have huge goggles over their eyes and say, "Ah, well, you must be new here. I'm uh, I'm an inventor right now. I'm trying to see if I can make an extract which will help me sprout wings by two weeks' time. It's never worked before, but today." could be the day. That's so cool. Do you know how to use wings? Because I wouldn't even know what to do if I had them. Well, uh, they look at you. By the time you reach the first century, you're used to improvising. I mean, I have no idea, but isn't that part of the fun? Anything could happen. Keeps the colors bright. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I prefer not to, to fall to my death, though, so it's it's always good not to not to fly too close to the sun. <laughs> they, they sort of look at you for a moment. Well, as long as you're here, you have nothing to worry about. Uh, where are you headed this morning, if I might ask? I have no idea. Uh, breakfast, I guess. Ah, the bakery. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Unless something else smells better. You absolutely must try one of their muffins. Amazing. Never had anything like it. Definitely get butter. Uh, and then they go back to uh, pouring something into this beaker. Uh, watch out, there may be another boom. Uh, and, and they seem intent on this work. I'm going to watch to see if there's a boom. <laughs> All right wait for about five more minutes sure enough another loud explosion that just poof, ricochets them off their feet this time sort of blows them back against the wall and you just hear this delighted giggle Hoo -hoo, i think we're really getting somewhere uh i'm trying to think of what i would ask you to roll me for this do you have lore alchemy no <laughs> It's really just watching explosions <laughs> with no no reason. You can... I think I. <laughs> yeah, you you could stick around for a while, and, and after a while, you gather this may be a slow process. You certainly don't see anything like wings beginning to sprout, uh, but they they seem excited about it. Yeah, I think I think eventually um, Nami's going to want to get breakfast, and and Um will follow him. <laughs> so we'll head to the bakery. <laughs> You make your way through this district, which smells a little sulfuric, a little tingly to the nose, and um, then through another area of green lawns, cute little winding alleyways, uh, until you arrive at this same uh, royal blue painted brick bakery. Um, these little silver stars on the walls. You see the sign that says Celestine Bakery. And you will notice standing at the end of the line, Professor Z. Of course, you don't know his name, but there's a, a gnome who seems to be a scholarly sort of figure with a, a construct beside him. What would you like to do? I'd like to walk up to the to the construct and just ask, is, is it okay if I if I touch you? Are you made of metal or? The construct makes some sort of clinking noises and releases a bit of steam, and that kind of alerts Professor Z that the, the construct has been interacted with, and Professor Z turns and says, ah, you want to meet the construct? Well, this is Buster, and Buster's a little bit busted, so he doesn't really speak. Can I help you, though? Yeah, this is just, it's so interesting. Uh, does does Buster have sentience, or, or do you control Buster, or how does that work? Sentience is a, is a strong word. Buster is a bit of my uh, invention assistant. Helps out around the place, but you know, you got to give him a lot of instructions and sometimes he just blows up. Oh, that's cool. Can you make him blow up now? I think that'd be a little bit dangerous out here on the street, but I mean, you know, we could head off to the lab if you really want to see some uh, things fall apart. That'd be cool. Maybe, maybe after breakfast. 
Indeed, I never start a good day of breaking stuff until I've had my proper breakfast from the bakery here. Do you recommend anything here? I'm sure I do, but I don't know what to to recommend. What is Oom interested in particularly? Can you indicate to Professor Z the kind of uh, sure? Yeah, I I always love. Hermia has wonderful strawberries, and I just haven't had any in a while. So anything that has strawberries in it would be wonderful. Well, Professor Z, you would know that Celestine Bakery uh, occasionally does have strawberry galettes, strawberry scones. It's a little bit off season for strawberries right now, at the end of winter, but uh, they might have some preserved or dried. You, you never know. You can also highly recommend their tea cakes. It seems like Um is maybe a sweet breakfasty person. Um, so tea cakes, scones, or galettes seem a good bet to you. Indeed. Well, I pick up a scone every morning uh, on my way to work. That's part of my sort of daily routine to get started on, uh, you know, inventing the next big thing, as it were. Uh, you need the right brain food to really get going, and it's important to have a well-balanced diet. But if you're looking for something a little more, uh, you know, dessert first thing in the morning, the tea cakes are absolutely lovely, too. And for a special occasion, I'll happily pick up several tea cakes. That sounds delightful. We're going to go to Ember and Temerity. You've taken a different route into the city. You've made your way south to Brasselwark from Keown, first by sailing along Lake and Carthen, then taking several river barges through various neighboring countries to Cheliax um, until you reach the Chelish border and uh, then you've been making your way on foot to Brasselwork since then. You got in range yesterday, but you weren't quite close enough to, to push through and make it to the city, so you stayed with a kind farmer and his husband, and he sent you on your way uh, at Ember's insistence quite early in the morning, and you are arriving at Brasselwork from the northwest, um, so you'll be, you'll be making your way down through a wide avenue that's paved, um, has trees of several different varieties and like little shrubs lining it on both sides. There doesn't seem to be much rhyme nor reason to the plantings here either. Why don't you go ahead and describe yourselves? Amber, would you like to? So... Ember is a two-tone copper and white husky. He he looks a little kind of worse for wear. His his fur is a little bit ragged and he does have quite a few scars uh, across his body. His eyes are different colors. The left one is gold with a like scar going down in kind of a weird sort of like white tuft of fur uh, around like marking of fur around it. And the other is brown. He also has on a leather strip around his neck a single gold ring. But he is a very good dog. <laughs> okay, I guess that's me then. Temerity appears to be a tiefling, but maybe not like tieflings you've probably seen before. His skin is a lush green, and his horns look more like antlers. They're embellished with little spirals of metal and little caps of metal here and there. He's, he's pretty toothy and he has accentuated this with some mouth jewelry. He's got, he's got like, you know, you don't know what kind of metal it is, but there's some kind of metal in there. And they're very, you know, like they're on the canines and the incisors up at, on the top and on the bottom. And if you happen to be able to read Elvish script, you would notice that one of them has a T and the other one has a V. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Oh, he has black eyes, no sclera, just black. He's, he just looks like a cheerful dude. Making his way into town with his, with his dog friend, like you do. Ember is, is definitely leading the way. He will say, um, it is morning. Uh, Mirror will be at the place where bread is made. 
a bakery. Wonderful. And he kind of perks up, like ears kind of perk up a bit. And he's like, this is the way. And we'll uh, uh, head off to the bakery. Ember, I'm going to need you to roll me survival. I'm so good at that. The city has changed since you were last here a very long time ago in dog time. Uh, yes. Would have been years. Okay, survival. Yeah, that'll do it. 19. You, you feel like something has changed about this place? Like, the routes your nose used to lead you are sometimes blocked by something. Uh, or they, they just are oriented in a different way, and yet, you can still navigate through. You find a path pretty easily. Temerity, sometimes you're, like, squeezing in between houses. Sometimes this dog is taking you, like, down the middle of a thoroughfare, and you're dodging, like, carts and people. But you manage to make your way pretty easily, all told, to Celestine Bakery. And you two will notice this gorgeously painted blue building with silver stars. Ember, you just know this is the place Mira will be. Boom and Professor Z, um, you were at the, the end of the morning rush line, which is um, now fizzled out a little bit, and you've made your way inside. You are probably being served by the gnome woman behind the counter um, when Temerity and Ember walk in. This is pretty remarkable because Oom and Professor Z, you don't recognize this tiefling elf at all, but you both recognize this dog. Z, this looks a lot like the dog that the owner of the bakery, Mira, and her wife used to have. Um, but like he has been through a lot since you last saw him, um, he looks pretty rough compared to the way he used to. And, Oom, um, you recognize this as Ember, uh, someone you met while you were in Verduran Forest a while ago and felt a connection with. What would you like to do? Uh, do I do I notice them? Yeah, uh, okay. you, you smell... <laughs> two scents that you recognize in addition to like uh, flour and sugar and something that smells a little fermented um these are the smells of friends you do not know their names but you know that oh, so one was names. definitely a friend of your masters and the other one has given you scratches behind the ears in this very bakery before uh but but mira doesn't seem to be you do not Here, as far smell as I... nor okay. see Mira. There is someone who seems maybe vaguely familiar behind the counter. I'm going to investigate these these friends first. Um, I'm going to... Ember will be kind of like confused for a second, but will kind of like go over, uh, like pad his way over to Um. And just... Uh, like look up at you and his his mouth doesn't move when he speaks uh it just kind of is like sort of magical voice uh, but he he will say i remember you you smell like a friend uh, his tail wags <laughs> hi um i i don't think you could speak the last time i saw you uh, how? I can do many things now. What, what can you do? Uh, he kind of like, he sits and he thinks for a second and like cocks his head and he's like, he says, I can fight. I can talk. I can tell people things. I can set bad people on fire. That's... <laughs> That's a very useful skill to have. Where, where's Oriana? That's her name. That's her name. <laughs> I don't know. He's a dog. D does he say that? <laughs> no, no. Justin says that. I've been wondering what her name is for so long. Justin, quick question. Yep. When Ember speaks, um, is it? 
is it out loud or are you talking only to Um? Are you it talking is out or to Um? It is out loud. Okay. Um, yeah. I just but, want to uh, hear it or not. Yeah, you definitely, you would definitely hear it. It's just his mouth doesn't move, but he does produce sound. Um, uh, he will say, Oriana, and he will think for a second. It will probably take him a while, but I think he will eventually realize, um, you mean, you mean the wild master. Or, or your friend, I mean, you can, you can talk now. Did, did Oriana help with that? No, she is, she is dead. He will say, and he's kind of like his ears go like just a little flat. I'm sorry. Do you do you need a, a hug or a pet? I would like a pet. And he, I... he kind of he thinks for a second and he is like, it is it is sad, but it is the way of all things that live. Can can I get you a, a scone or a, a tea cake? I like bread. You can have whatever bread you want. <laughs> his tail wags some more. His, his ears perk up. Ember, would you like to introduce me to your friend? Ah, this is friend elf. Friend elf tiefling. This is friend gnome. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Temerity Vane. Hi, I'm Oom. You have really cool teeth. Like, can, can I touch them? You certainly may. And I will lean <laughs> <get> over. <laughs> like, a couple feet taller than you, I guess. And... How tall is Temerity? <laughs> Temerity is five foot five. He's a short king, baby. Nice. That's so cool. Did, did that hurt? You know, there was some trial and error while I figured it out, but <laughs> once I got it, I got it. It's easy. If you want some, I'm a very good barber. That sounds a bit frightening, but maybe. <laughs> well, if you change your mind. Uh, Ember, Ember will, will look over at um, Professor Z and, and be like, you also smell like a friend. Do I know you? You seem like quite strikingly familiar. I am Ember. Did you used to like live here? Like, wasn't there a dog at this place? Also, what is going on? I know this place. I have been here before. Okay. But like, what is going on in this town? I just, you know, you think you're moving to a place where you can just come and make a name for yourself and you get here and it's like, it's kind of wacky. Like, I'm sure I know you. Didn't, didn't they have a dog here? Were you the dog here? Did they have a dog here? I swear they had a dog here. I like am he a used dog to sit who behind has been the here. counter. The counter but, is warm. He wags his tail. I didn't Time is realize, not his best thing. <laughs> I didn't realize you could speak. Like, I can do many things now. This is all quite a lot. This is all quite a lot. I thought I understood the ways the world worked, but it's just, you know, you find something new and it, it's a real puzzle. Well, it's it's good to meet you, and I'm gonna try and like reach out my hand to to shake your hand or paw or or however that might work, a little bit awkwardly, and be like, it's good, it's good to meet you, a Ember. Uh, he will. Is it like palm up or like palm down or like sideways? <laughs> sideways, like very much like. Ember will like try to like put his, his paw on your hand. <laughs> Not very gracefully. <laughs> at, at this, the woman behind the counter has been readying your order. 
Um, and, and it seems like brewing up some kind of a, a beverage. And then she, she turns around and she's taken some of this in and her, her jaw has dropped a little bit. Unfortunately, the morning buzz has mostly um, subsided at the bakery, so she doesn't have a huge line, and she just says, It cannot be. I cannot, I cannot believe it. I, is it Ember? Ember will turn and, like, ears pick up and he'll say, I am Ember. <laughs> <sighs> we thought you were dead. I am not dead. You, you can talk! <laughs> like, she starts trembling. Um, she sets down uh, the drink she, she was holding and, and um, your pastries, which are on lovely little earthenware plates, and she, she just trembles. Alda, how can you talk? Just say again, I can do many things now. <laughs> Is... Is, is Oriana alive? No, you said she was dead. This is quite a lot. Um, and I'm going to sit down on a stool behind the counter. Well, I, she is going to sit down on a stool behind the counter. She has, by the way, very beautiful fuchsia hair and deep golden eyes. And she um, sits down on this stool and uh, takes what looks to be sort of a, um, a cloth that's hanging from a pocket of her apron and starts swabbing her face with it. Oh my, this is... I do not know what to say. Tavi will want to see you, but he is not here right now, and I... Oh. She looks overwhelmed. Uh, I'm... I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut in, I guess. This poor lady in a tizzy. <laughs> we don't know her name, do we? Uh, you don't know her name. It, it is worth noting, Temerity, she sounds like she's from Keonan. Okay. She's what speaking is speaking common with a okay. very Keonan accent. Okay. Um, is she a gnome? Yes, she is. Okay. Noted. I will say, dear lady, is there is there a way I can help you? You seem to be a little bit uh, flushed. Uh, did you know Oriana? I'm afraid I didn't. I met Ember. Uh, we've had a couple of adventures together. We're very good friends, I think. He thinks. We think. How... Can I get you some water? Oh, no. Um, why do you not go upstairs? And I will. I will meet you up there. And um, what would you like? It's on the house. I'll. I'll just point at something that looks good. Is it? Is there like a, a display of some sort? Oh, yes. Okay. In the windows, like bountiful trays upon trays, behind a counter, um, lovely little sweet and savory pastries, whole big loaves of bread. They're they're more in the windows. Um, what looks like a frittata as well, and then there's a, a board that has chalk writing and um, different options for various drinks one can buy. There are coffees from Kadira and Osirian and elven and gnome teas and hot chocolate and something called steamers. It's a lovely little I don't want to make her have to like make something for me so I'm just going to point to something that's already ready like you know a, a savory uh pastry of some sort and she will give you a savory galette. Thank uh, you. Thank you. And actually she will uh she will put it on what seems to be a system of levers and pulleys that have mechanical gears and she will start pulling it up. Uh, she will say, it will be waiting for you on the second floor. Um, just let me, let me close up for a moment and I, I will meet you. Thank you, my lady, thank you. Let's go to the second floor. All right. Are these randos following us? <laughs> I'm gonna keep petting the dog, so as long as... Okay. Ember is okay with that. <laughs> the dog, the dog is um, perfectly content with that, but he is also very hot to the touch. <laughs> Not quite. The description on my page says almost painfully hot, but I prefer to imagine that it's just warm. <laughs> Maybe as as long as I I can pet the dog without taking damage. <laughs> <laughs> You can certainly uh, pet the dog without taking damage. 
Is the is the magic box that food comes out of new? Yeah, I think it would be. Okay, then I will not expect food to come out of the magic box. <laughs> um, you will be given what seem to be a, a pile of baked treats specifically for dogs. Oh, excellent. Display cases. Um, and Ember, can you climb stairs? Yes. I thought so, but <laughs> not not super steep stairs, but like normal normal incline stairs, yes. Okay. Normal <laughs> incline stairs. He he does he does climb them quickly in the way that dogs do. <laughs> so that he doesn't fall. <laughs> there will be um a few people eating chatting over their breakfast quietly upstairs, but um you can find a table in the corner and uh, you hear the door shut and like a sign flip around downstairs. Um, Professor Z, what are you and Buster doing? I think we will turn to Mira and not Mira. say, no Mira. It's not Mira. <laughs> Who was serving us then? You would know her name is Katura. Okay, Katura. I don't know, I just figured that Mira was always the one who served me at the big grade. She, so. she used to be. Okay. So, turn to Katura and say, what is all this? This is such an unusual... Are these people all here for the Festival of Flight? I, I do not know. You know, this is, this is Mira's wife's dog. And, well, you know what happened to, to Oriana. We thought that Ember had died too, and Mira certainly does not know. I, I do not know how they came here or why. I do not know what is going on. I am confused too. I could have sworn I had met this dog before, which I guess I had, but it never spoke. Oh, goodness, no. Do you think it has a devil inside it? I guess so. I don't know. Somebody should study this. Should we head off to the tinkerings? No, 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 no. no, no. If, it, if it is so, because you know, you know where Oriana died, then we are not the people to deal with this. Tavi will need to be here. P Professor Z, you, you must help me. Protect me. Protect you from what? I was just gonna go get. Uh, now I need a name for a professor I vaguely know who's kind of a zoologist. One moment. Do you have like a hat to pick names from, Esther? Wolfbert Rumblebelly. Wolf. I was gonna just go get Wolfbert. Wolfbert would know about this kind of thing. Uh, no, no, Professor Z. I am just. A, a girl from Omesta who has a passion for fermentation. Don't leave me. <laughs> You'll be fine. This is just the bakery. Brasselwork is a very safe place. No. She, she uh, throws herself against the door <laughs> and is trembling. I do not know what to do. I never deal with this, but you have gone and, and done so much and made this giant thing. You are the expert. Think of what you could learn from them. Well, that's why I wanted to, to go ask a, another professor. Like, this is a real research opportunity here to really understand how you go from having a dog to having a dog. Well, if you must, she'll unlock the door for you, but she, she looks terrified at this point i'm gonna say to buster go fetch and i've forgotten the name professor wolfbert wolfbert yes buster go fetch professor wolfbert and i'll scrawl a little note that says professor wolfbert there's a, a talking dog at the bakery and put it in a, a drawer uh, on buster and then sort of shove Buster so that Buster gets some momentum and saunters off. Okay. 
before you added the note, I was really like, is he just gonna, are we just gonna see a guy being like dragged down the street by his arm by Buster who's steaming? <laughs> Buster goes Wait, clank, 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 and you see him reach the end of the block. <laughs> you decide to turn around and go upstairs. Sounds good. Um, so your, uh, your pastries and breakfast items and treat will arrive on this system of mechanical, mechanistic pulleys, um, and you can fetch them to the table. And then, uh, Professor Z and Katora, um, who will introduce herself to you, will, will arrive at your table. Uh, forgive me, I, I do not think you all know I am Katora. I work here at the bakery as one of the, the two master bakers in training. Ember will gingerly take the treat and then like curl up underneath the table because he knows that's where he's supposed to be. <laughs> Hi, Katura. 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 I don't really know what's happening here either, but you know, uh, I just came with him so that he wouldn't be alone on the trip, really. He said he had business, so I said, okay, let's go. Tamara is the only person who seems like not really, like it's it's a talking dog, it's whatevs, you know? Like it's cool, but like everybody else is like, this dog is talking and Tamara is just like, yeah, this this guy, you guys don't know this guy? I mean, I'm surprised that he can talk now, but I'm not surprised that he can talk. I mean, Nami can talk. <laughs> oh, that's true. Temerity is yeah, a good exactly. boy. That's why it's like, you know, we live in a magic world. Why are you guys, why is it a big deal that the dog is talking? But I guess, you know, you didn't, you never heard him talk before, but now he talks, so that's weird. That's what makes it weird. <laughs> yeah, that's what makes it weird. He can talk, he can talk now. <laughs> but I mean, it, him talking isn't weird. <laughs> Katora sits down and sips what seems to be a um, steamed milk with an infusion of lavender. P perhaps it is best you orient me to what is going on, how you all know Ember. I haven't seen Ember in, in quite a while, actually. Um, the last time I, I saw him, uh, he was with Oriana, and, and now I hear that Oriana's past. How did how did that happen? I really feel Tavi should be here to tell you this, but I do not know. Only that she was alone with Ember, I suppose. In it was a bad day. Ember will say, like really sadly. Roll me diplomacy secretly. Whoever is trying to coax this information from her. Uh, I am not. I know I'm, this information. I'm trying to, but I, I don't want to press her if she seems traumatized. No, she she seems to sigh like she's under something. What's the, what, what did you say to roll? Diplomacy. I have to do it secretly? Is that... A, I know you said how to do it earlier, but I wasn't listening. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. Just, uh, if t is Temerity on the map? Temerity is not on the map, no. Okay. If you drag him onto the map, which I think you can do from... Yes. I want to know what it is. Katora leans towards Oom and says, Oriana's research, which I do not understand fully... I only know that it took her to the Whisper Wood. And something happened there. And you know what they say about the Whisper Wood? I can only imagine what it might have been. What what do they say about the Whisper Wood? <laughs> about the Whisper Wood. Temerity, what kind of lore do you have trained? Currently? Mm -hmm. I have surgery. Okay. That's it. I would accept rules for religion or nature or occult. 
if anybody has those trained. All right, Ember. The memories of that day are in your mind. Whatever you've heard of the Whisperwood, this word sounds kind of new. It, nothing is particularly ringing a bell. Temerity, you have heard a lot about the Whisperwood. As you know, one of your mothers is from the Barrow Wood, another forest in Sheliax. Um, the Whisperwood has a storied reputation as a place that is full of monsters and irregularities. There's a rumor that there is a portal to hell there that has not been closed, but that for some odd reason, the hell-worshipping monarchy of this country wants closed. It's a very intriguing place. It's a place that you would expect someone powerful to go alone with their dog, but not just anyone would wander in there. So I have definitely never been there. Is that what you're saying? You've never been. Uh, no, 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 you have. Uh -huh. You have been there. That's <laughs> right. You have been there. <laughs> okay. You, you've picked up some goods for your friend Prinkle several decades ago. Okay. In the Whisperwood. That, that one friend that I did that work for? Yes, that one friend that you did okay. that work for. Okay, got it. Ember, Ember will say it is a place with strangers and fog and angry skies and it is where I met the bad master. It's the bad master. Is the bad master who you is am I aware of the bad master? You saved me from yeah. the bad master. So who's who's the bad master? And it's and he, he says he says again that like you are a good boy as like his way of saying thank you. <laughs> I like to think so, Ember, thank you. So who is the bad master? There's this guy. Ember just kind of growls a bit. <laughs> He's a real dick. He's a guy, right? He's a guy. Okay. Let's just say he's a real fucking dick and leave it at that for now. Because I don't think, is it, it does this relate to the story? This is after. Katora just says, well, I do not know. Miss Katora. Yes. Perhaps if we all started together from the beginning, we can make sense of what happened, how Ember learned to talk. Uh, but really, the, Ember has, has a mission and that's why we're here. He has something that he would like to accomplish. Where is her wife? Oh, I do not know. I mean, she she has gone, but she will be back, but I do not know where she is now. But it is morning. Mira is here in the morning. Uh, not this morning. Not mm. many mornings. She... I really feel it would be best for Tavi to tell you this. Tavi is Mira's nephew. He is... The other master baker, he's running things in her absence, and he he's not here either, but he's in the city. He's just making a very important delivery this morning, and I do not know exactly when he will be back. I, I do not feel it is my place to tell you everything when it is Tavi's family. Where did Tavi head off? Well... I should really not be telling you this, but we have been working so hard on our sourdoughs and the pastries that Tavi was invited to the palace of King Drum Thornfiddle as a potential vendor for the Festival of Light. And so he has been delivering our baked goods there this morning, and 
the king and other important people are going to taste them and then maybe they will sign a contract. So it's a big day for Tavi and for the bakery. And that is where he is. Well, congratulations. That's very good news. How long does it take to deliver pastries? Well, he will be there while they eat them and then they may ask him questions and then, you know, they may go and do uh, something like an outing together to keep the colors bright and then they may come back and sign the contract. So it could be anywhere from an hour to four hours, I would, I would guess. Well, you know, you said that he's her family and everything, but you know, Amber is her family too, isn't he? She, she looks scared. You seem very worried. How much do you know about the Whisperwood? I've been there. She looks even more terrified. <laughs> <laughs> she scoots back slowly in her chair. Well, it wasn't recently. It was maybe 40 years ago. <laughs> she, she, her eyes are getting big, but... So, well, just explain to me one more time what it is you want me to tell you. Okay. Um, let me work this out. <laughs> myself for a moment so that I can figure out what it is I want her to tell me. And this, friends, is why I used an accent in this campaign so that I will never be busted in character say, for saying something that was supposed to be out of character. Um, okay, so what I'm personally trying to figure out as somebody who's been hanging out with Ember and therefore knows almost nothing, like, he here's what I kind of know. Ember had a master whose name he did not know. She died in the woods, but I didn't know it was those woods because he didn't know the name of the woods. He died in the woods. Everything was very bad. It was very sad is what I gathered. And we're here to bring her ring back to her wife. All of this other shit is new, right? Like all of the, all of the supposed, the kind of like weird stuff. That's it. Is that right? Ember wouldn't have a lot of knowledge about like the circumstances of the Whisperwood. He knows about the day um, and that it was a very bad day, but not a lot of detail that is useful. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I have. I think I've. I think I've got it. I keep remembering her name is Katara, and I know that's not right. What was Katura. it? Katara. 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 Okay. Miss Kitura, you have to understand, before we came in here, I didn't really know that there was anything suspicious or weird or scary. All I know is what my friend told me. He had a very bad day. He lost his friend. He needs to bring her, her wife, her ring. But now, you're making it sound like maybe there's something terribly wrong here. Well, all I know is the Whisperwood sounds like a terrible place and he has come back talking. I do not know if it is some force. Anyway, you know, possessing him. Oh, I see. Okay, clarifying question about um, geography in the world. Mm -hmm. We are not currently in Chelyax? You are. But she's, oh, but she's from Keonan and that's why she's so weird. Okay, got it, got it, got it. She's from Keonan and that's why she's so weird. I see. Okay, I'm gonna come at her from a, wait, hold on. Are the woods that I'm from in Chelyax? Not as reputational as the Whisperwood. Okay, but like, what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to gather here is, am I from a devil worshiping country or not? You're kind of from three places, right? Yes. So, a third, yes. Which third is yes? 
the barrow wood. Y- your okay. your um your bard mama is okay. is from Cheliax. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. All right. Okay. I think I think I understand a little bit better now. I realize you have a very familiar accent. You sound like members of some of my family, you know, uh, distantly. I think maybe <laughs> perhaps you are not as accustomed to some of the the hellish things that um, those of us who have spent some time in different countries might have been exposed to. But I've spent a little bit of time with, with Ember here, and I gotta tell you, I don't I don't think there's anything evil going on. I think he's I think he's a good boy. Have have Professor Z and Um finished their pastries? I'm busy petting you. Okay. <laughs> Picture you being like half under the table, petting Ember because Ember knows he's supposed to be under the table. Well, it's just a matter of if they haven't finished their pastries, I'm definitely going to put my head in their lap. I will. I will share half a pastry with you. Yeah. Excellent. I'm very happy. Do you, do you feel possessed, Ember? I am a good boy. That's good enough for me. Um, wait, we were introduced, right? We introduced each other, I know your yeah, name? Yeah. Okay, yeah. great, sorry. Are you um, a, a magical practitioner of some sort? Yes, I'm, I'm a sorcerer. Are you able to magically determine if there's evil in our friend here? No, I mean, I could detect if he's magical, but he's clearly magical, he can talk. Oh, did I say, ma- I mean, evil. Eat bad magic, not good magic. I don't believe I would be able to distinguish between bad magic and good magic, just that he is magic. And he's definitely magic. <laughs> if I am magic, I am good magic. Temerity, roll me another secret diplomacy check. All right. Oh no, it disappeared, hold on. Where did I go? There I go. Secret diplomacy? Yes. Katora looks very uncertain, but she will slowly kind of crouch down and half crawl under the table next to Oom and like slowly reach out a hand and touch the very top of Ember's head. And she will say, oh, he's quite warm. He did say he could set things on fire. I can set things on fire. But he said he only (laughs) sets bad guys on fire. Yes. I've, I've set bad people on fire. I, I will... I will try to believe that he's good. I turn to Temerity and I say, I am just from Omesta, and I, I came here because I have a passion for fermentation and baking, and I heard this is the best city in the world to keep your colors bright. So he, he, he couldn't do this before then? Set the, the warm thing? No. I don't know. I, I feel was... like that actually be really helpful for a bakery, you know, fermentation, warm dog. <laughs> she looks a little overwhelmed. Well, you know, nothing will keep you brighter than a surprise. Well, that is true, as she looks encouraged. It is definitely a very big surprise, and uh, I feel that I am brighter for it, if terrified. But my father used to say that sometimes a shock of fear is good for the system, so I will try to take it that way. About Mira. Tavi will be able to tell you more. What I know is that she has been going on the journeys ever since she she found Oriana. And 
It's for longer and longer periods of time. She's left Tavi and, and me in charge of the bakery, and what she shares with Tavi I do not completely know. I get the sense that she is looking for the person who killed Oriana. Okay, question to Justin. Yes. Did you tell me that a person killed her or that she died? I don't know. What I remember, she was mortally wounded by a group of strangers. So I would say yes, probably. Okay. But the stranger, what's his name, the douchebag? He wasn't related to those strangers he found you later? Or no? I, that, that is a distinction I can't make. He found me soon afterwards. Okay. Definitely, but, like, same day. Okay, but would you have been able to tell if he was the one who killed her? He wasn't aware when, like, kind of right before she died, so he doesn't really know. Okay. Okay, cool. Got it. People say, if Mira is away, perhaps we should go home. Who is he speaking to? Just kind of out loud. Okay. Temerity, probably, yeah. Where's home, Ember? Home is nearby. You mean Oriana and Mira's home? Home. If you wait There is only Tavi, one home. He will take you there. Or he can meet you there. I, w I will tell him to meet you there. I can wait. Do I only know Oriana, or do I know any of these other names, like Mira and Tabby? Well, Oriana almost certainly would have mentioned that she was married to a woman named Mira, and yeah, it's very likely she would have mentioned Tabby. Okay. Uh, if, if it's all right, then I'd, I'd like to uh, stay and at least pay my respects to uh, Oriana's family. It's fine with me. I'm gonna Ooh, keep hugging. A good gnome. I'm gonna keep hugging Ember. Yay. <laughs> <clears throat> Professor Z, it is worth noting what Katora is saying about um, Oriana going to the Whisperwood. It rings some bells. I've been furiously taking notes this whole time to write up in a in a dispatch paper to all of my peers about this this goes on. I think Ember's Ember's ears like perk up and is like, you do the scritches. Wildmaster did the scritches. Wildmaster? What do you mean by Wildmaster? Oriana. Oriana. This is her name. Oriana did the scritches when she went to the places that were old. Yes, I uh, know that. Oriana and I have collaborated once upon a time. Collaborate. Work um, together. I'm trying to figure out how I want to put this. Hi, Temerity Vane. Pleasure to meet you. Good to meet you too. I'm Professor Z. I'm uh, one of the, the multitude of inventors of Brasselmark. Lovely. I would be very interested at another time to learn more about your inventions. Um, Why, yes, I'm the future uh, head of the Tinkerings. You'll, you'll certainly see me in that post coming up. So I would love to talk about that more. Wonderful. You are not a head. You are a gnome. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe I mentioned already that I don't know, um, everything I know is what Amber was able to tell me. So maybe, what were you studying with her? What was she studying? He told me she, they go to old places. I am very interested in that because I'm, I also like to go to old places, but I, I was unable to understand what he, what he meant that they were doing research or just copying things down. I, what can you tell me? 
Well, you see, uh, I, I conduct research in a multitude of fields and I'm preeminent in quite a few of them, but I was collaborating with Oriana on a particular uh, strain of archeology span as we went to discover uh, and, and identify potential places where we might find a, a, ma a magical source or something which could uh, assist in the problems which face all of gnome kind. And we're actually, we're quite close to, to unlocking the archeological puzzles of the wild. Uh, I just, you know, I'm sure that when uh, Oriana returns that we can continue to collaborate on our, on our latest paper and it will go quite well. Oriana's dead. <laughs> just making sure Professor C got that. Sorry, I didn't mean, you know, when she comes back alive. I guess that's to say when her, when her research notes come back. But, you know, uh, I mean, really uh, Ember, the most Ember. important thing is that we get this paper published. Ember actually growls at this and it's like, it basically says the dead do not walk again like a warning well i don't know maybe we just haven't discovered the way to make that happen yet i mean the research is just so close you know the dead do not walk again okay do you have a question is professor z telling the truth <laughs> in mm. his own mind in his own mind i mean sort of in his own mind it is most important to publish the paper and i don't think he really cares about how that comes about okay then i will need you to make a secret deception check. Okay, everybody else roll me secret perception checks. Oh dear. Come to me in the character sheet. Perceive. Everybody, you feel like Professor Z is a little full of shit with this story. Like, maybe he doesn't fully even know that, but he really gets the vibe that Something is not quite adding up. Certainly for Oom, who knew Oriana? You feel like that would have been a really, really strange collaboration, even for gnomes. Like, like something, something is just not quite right here. Though he does seem quite sincere with what he's saying. Ember, does Professor Z smell like a good person? I don't know. Does Professor Z smell like a good person? <laughs> well, he certainly doesn't smell like an enemy. Well, there are only two kinds of, well, there are three kinds of people, but that's it. So, <laughs> he's a good person then. <laughs> bad or naughty, so he smells good. And the third one is not naughty. Yeah, it's a different class. <laughs> but most people are good or bad. What's the third one? Uh, best. Best is the third one. Ah. Uh. <laughs> So how does Ember respond? Is, is, does Professor Z smell good or bad? <laughs> oh, he, he will say, he does not smell bad. That's good. I do shower every morning, so you know. I wasn't asking you, I was asking Ember. I'm very confused by all of this. This isn't really the normal weekday routine, and I have uh, quite a lot of important work to do to, you know, get the correct meetings for the festival flight. I'd like to hear more about your work and, and exactly how you uh, collaborated with Oriana. Well, you see, I, I have a long history of uh, important research, including in the field of archaeology, but it was sort of a, a new undertaking for me when I met Oriana. And I was, uh, you know, out discovering uh, new meanings to certain ruins. And Oriana came along and helped me do some of the translation. And so I've added her as a co-author on one of my papers. A co-author, even though it sounds like you're new to the field and you are taking all of her information? Well, you see, I wouldn't exactly call myself new to the field. I'm quite the polymath in, in academia, and I'm well-respected across many fields. So people should just expect that, you know, as, as in many preeminent scholars, that our, you know, advanced intellect can help us operate in many, many different areas. You just said you were new to the field, so which, which is it? I feel that maybe... You're attaching too much weight to the newness to the field versus uh, a vast depth of experience when it comes to invention and making the, the world a better place. And it's really important that we allow people from across multiple fields to contribute in this way. And that's why I, who started out doing a, a little bit of alchemy and then I moved into some invention and construction 
work and 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 now I'm I'm on archaeology and I can just apply the same techniques I've applied everywhere and it you know it will just really bring a new perspective that's really helpful to the field of archaeology which has been a little bit uh, stuck in the past shall we say You're talking kind of fast Ember are you sure he doesn't smell like a bad person If he smelled like a bad person I would not talk to him and I would set him on fire Oh please don't set me on fire that sounds quite painful you are not a bad person. I will not set you on fire. Thank you very much. Sir, what's an insight check called here? It's just perception. Just perception. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Can I do that on Professor, on the nutty Professor here? You can perceive things about Professor Z. Alex, what's your deception modifier? What is my deception modifier? Uh... Six. Okay. Oh, the modifier is two, sorry, with a proficiency of four. Okay, so six, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Temerity, that is another secret check. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Secret perception? Yeah. Yeah. I just want to get a read on this guy. You get a very, very, very good read on this guy. (laughs) Alex, why don't you tell... Faye, out of character, the kind of read one would get with an extremely good role, if if hypothetically one rolled very, very well. Professor Z talks a very self-important game and kind of thinks that academia and and he himself are are the solution to many of the world's problems, and that people certainly non-academics in Brassel work should, you know, respect the high academic arts and traditions in a way that, yeah. And so it just sort of should be, should be, yeah. And then a lot of the talk of like collaboration too, like it shouldn't be surprising that people would want to collaborate with, with academics to Professor Z in, uh, in Brassel work. Like that's sort of the, the purpose, if that makes sense. So basically you're saying you're that guy. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. That's all. I just wanted to check that out and admire how spicy Oom is. Sweet voice. Spicy words. I love that shit. I just really love this dog. I find Ember quite fascinating too. Indeed. Yeah, but right now we're trying to help Ember and it doesn't sound like you're very forthcoming. I'm sorry, I, I, for the life of me, don't understand. My whole life's work has been about helping others and, and providing, you know, inventions and, and novelties to make the world a better place. And that's fine. We're not questioning your work. We're questioning how your work overlaps with Oriana's. Excuse me for butting in. I have to open the shop again. Oriana and Mira liked Professor Z for what it is worth to you. Mm. And she's gonna lean over and say, much to get used to. But Oriana spoke very fondly of him when she was in here, and they call him the helpless one. I never know why. So if it helps you, I do not think they distrust him. I have to get back. Uh, if Tavi comes, I will send him up. And she sort of gives like a few backward glances, especially toward Ember. Like she is not quite sure what to make of this dog, but she will return to her duties and open the bakery. What are we gonna do, lads? I vote we take a 10 minute break. All right. We are back post break. So the plan is to go to the place Ember calls home, as I understand it. Okay. And you're gonna wait for this person named Tavi at home. All right, cool. So you can make your way down and out of the bakery after having a delicious, it must be said, breakfast. You'll get out into the lane and indeed you will walk several feet, several yards, and you will hear a clank, 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 clank noise, 
and Buster has reached one of the uh, sudden, complete dead ends that are a thing in Brasselwark, where the lane just ends against a wall, and Buster has come to this wall and is now clank, 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 trying to walk, but he can't get any further. His note still attached to him. Professor Z, would you like to help your creation? Yeah, so Professor Z is going to sort of give Buster a tap and then reach into his pocket and take out something that looks like a wrench and without actually like tightening any bolts or anything like that, just give a like clank and that will sort of reset Buster so that Buster is now back to following Professor Z. Roll me crafting. Crafting, where is my... Ooh. So, this oh, is the first natural one of the campaign. <laughs> this is a great time to revisit the concept of hero points, which allow you oh, to yes. re-roll something if you would so like to. You may spend one hero point to re-roll a roll such as this. Or if you want to leave it as a nat one because it's funny, you can do that too. But I feel like I rebuild Buster on a regular basis anyhow, so if what happens is I like whack him with the wrench and he just falls to pieces on the ground, that's fine. You whack him with the wrench and like there's a total freeze and then like some g -g 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 <laughs> noises and something that sounds like a clank inside. He shudders <laughs> violently for a moment and then everything drops into place and he begins to move completely normally. You're not sure what happened, what's going on in there, if it, if it might need to be looked at later, but he, he's moving normally. So who is leading the way to Ember's home? I will lead the way. Okay. I know the way home. I do not know the way home, you but I would like to, to think me. I do. Society or survival, which yes, is Yes, the dog is so good at society. Survival, Several. please. 24. Once again, you are really able to navigate this city. You were not awakened the last time you were here, so a lot of the changes in architecture and roadways and flora and fauna are going to be a little lost on you. Again, sometimes the routes you would take are, are suddenly closed off or blocked, or there's a whole house where there was not, or like a, a well or a garden, but you manage to like wind your way through the streets with a great ease, following your nose and your heart to the place that you call home, which is going to be on the, the outskirts of the city, on the western side. I will ping it on your map, and then I will... I will put the name in there for next time, but it's this, this little place right over here, if you can see these pings. Oh, I see the one all the way on the, the west all side. Over there. You can see there's not really a forest immediately outside of Brasselwork, but there are little groves of trees that form small woodlands, and this cottage is in and amongst some some pine trees, and there's lots of like low, um, scruffy bushes around that look tended, but as if they are being um, tended in a wild way instead of a very ordered garden. And you can make your way there. It seems to be locked. No lights are does on. It, no, one is, no one is home outside, that is. Does it smell familiar? Like, yeah. oh. It smells I am. The, the smell of pine and fern and the wood of this house. It seems to be made entirely of wood by the way. It's very familiar. And Bert just says, I am happy. I am home. And will happily pad his way and do like a lap around the house. And I'm gonna go and like smell various things. And I'm gonna follow you while you lap and just kind of observe. Look around, would... see if anything's interesting. I want to find all of my secret hiding places. Okay. Recall knowledge, <laughs> buried treasure. I wish I had that. That'd be fun. Gosh, what should I even have you roll for this? Just some regular d <laughs> Sure. Yeah, I was going to say wisdom. 
I can roll wisdom. Just roll, roll me a straight wisdom. Okay, plus one. I'm gonna roll with a real die. Thirteen. Yeah. Okay. You're very happy that you feel like you're home. The tail is just, it's a very tail wagging moment. So you're gonna be a bit distracted by that for a while and it's going to take you several minutes, probably a good half an hour to calm down. Like you're ready to start digging and then you just gotta do another lap of the house and tell people that you're home. But eventually you seem to be able to focus and remember where some of your things were. And you will be able to get all of them up with time, but it'll take you a couple of hours, I would guess. I am perfectly content to take that couple of hours and he will dig up my starting equipment. There is a little band of dried leaves. There is a wolf fang and there is a little vial, which he will, he will like happily bring over in his mouth to Temerity. I, Temerity will not make any faces about the dog drool that gets into his hand from accepting this and say, what is this, my friend? It is liquid that makes you feel better. Does that mean anything to me? Drugs. Okay, so maybe drugs or maybe a potion. Does it look like a potion or does it look like drugs? It's a minor healing potion, so I don't know, Esther, you I tell was, me. I was going to say, you would be familiar with healing potions, and this looks like a healing potion to you. Okay. That's great. Would you like me to hold on to your things for you? I would like you to use it if it makes one of you feel better. I was not supposed to take it, but my... But it does make the master feel better, and so I wanted to have one. He really is a good boy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that away in my pack. And, uh, you know, obviously if, if Ember has things that need to be held or stashed, things that require hands or thumbs, you got a bro right here with a backpack or whatever. He will ask you to help him affix his talismans because, you know, he doesn't have hands. He has a very dexterous friend. Thank you. I will do that. Okay, Esther, I would like to affix the wolf fang to my attack and the uh, hunter's bane to my armor okay. <laughs> by slipping the band around my wrist. That sounds good to me. So what would the rest of you like to do while you're waiting around for Tavi to get home? While he was digging stuff up, like I said, I was kind of scoping the place out, like seeing if I could peek in the windows, you know, just kind of trying to get the lay of the land and see if I can glean anything. Okay, roll me a secret perception check. Secret perception check. We have, we've got a rogue and a locked door. What could happen? You, you look through the windows, there are curtains drawn across some of them, so it's difficult to see inside. And then you, you peer in and you can take in a kitchen. Seems there are some of Last Fall's apples that are out on a table. And it looks like a cheery kitchen, a lot of wooden implements, just some place that feels homey and like you could share a lot of good meals with like sweet friends. You don't notice anything too leading, though. It looks like it's lived in. Like, Tavi still lives here? Yeah, it looks like it's lived in. Okay, it's not like boarded up and dusty no. or anything. Oh, no, definitely not. Okay. Ember will right. wait at the door to be let in. If Ember's at the door, I will ask him if he would like me to open the door. Yes, you should open the door. The door should be opened. Okay, Ember, just to clarify, you understand that the door is locked and I will be opening it when it's locked. Does that mean anything to you? Nope. The door it's should be open so we can go inside. We should go inside. Yeah, that's good enough for me. I mean, this is Ember's home, so. It's his house. Yeah, he lives here. So. I, it's not like he has the capacity to open doors. So the difference between a locked door and a closed door is effectively nil. 
What do I roll for that? Not thievery. Thievery. Thievery! Temerity, describe to me how you pick this lock and open the door. You know, I I do it joyously because I feel like I have permission to. I feel empowered in this choice to break into this home. So I'm just like... You feel it give spring. The door opens. Ember will bound into the house as he usually does. Before we get inside, Oom and Professor Z, what are y'all up to? I'm just really enjoying seeing Ember after so long, so as long as he's okay with it, I'll just I'll just enjoy watching him dig up his his things. I'm taking notes and also feeling a little bit uncomfortable about this sort of violation of what I assume are brassel work norms of not breaking and entering. We did, like, homegirl, we t- he said he wanted to go home. She said, okay, I'll have Ricky Tiki Tavi, what's his name? Tavi. I'll have him meet you there. She didn't say I'll have him meet you outside of there. We're a little so bit splitting hairs at that point. <laughs> That it's his home. You would not break into the house, but I didn't break anything. <laughs> the luck's still a bunch of. You know what? I'll make sure to once we're inside, lock the door behind us. So it's the three of you inside, Professor Z outside, or do, do you follow them in? I'll follow them in. Like I'm sort of going along with this because I don't quite feel like. I don't know. Making oh, if that you, many I mean, waves. if you feel uncomfortable, you can wait outside. I mean, it's fine. Ember, do you, do you want to invite Professor Z inside? Everyone should come inside. Inside is warm. Okay, you, you all go inside, uh, shut and lock the door behind you. Ember will say, unless you want to play in the river, then you should go outside. You all know the river is on the other side of the city. Is it river playing weather or is it too cold for that? It's a little too cold to be river playing weather yet. Got it. Like no frost, but cold. So, inside, this, this house is so cozy. It's got these big wooden beams going across the ceiling, various spun tapestries from wool and like, like knitted blankets over little gnome-sized chairs. You can see hallways branching off that you assume lead to like a bedroom or two. And there, there's a wide open area that's like a family sitting room and then off Uh, one end of it, another room opens up, and it appears to be some kind of a study. There's a huge map on one wall of this room, and it has various locations that seem to be marked, either with little stars, or moons, or red suns. Like, absolutely huge. It's been painted onto the wall, in fact, and the stars and moons and suns are, are painted on it too, like a huge mural. And there are also desks in this room with various scrolls and books, some open, some in wooden bookshelves um, on either side of a window that looks out to the trees. What would you like to do? Upon seeing the map, Ember is going to get very excited and put his front legs up on one of the chairs and like get a very good look at the map. And he's going to sit and stare at this wall map for like 15 minutes, making sounds like Mm-hmm. What does the map mean, Ember? He just is like, maps tell you where to go. Esther, mm-hmm. I have several questions. By all means. Question number one. I don't know if this was offhand or not, but let me just investigate. You talked about the stars and moons and stuff that are painted on the wall. You mentioned stars and moons and stuff painted on the, the bakery. Yes. Is it similar? Yes. Very similar style of painting. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I assume they might have been painted by the same person. Got it. But, okay. Okay. So, next question. You said that there are a bunch of places on the map that are marked. Yes. Some are marked with dots and some are marked with suns? Some are marked with little stars. Some are marked with stars and, like, half moons. Some are marked with those and red suns. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. All right. 
So am I to assume that there is not a legend painted anywhere on the wall to tell me what the suns, moons, and stars mean? There is not a legend. Alas, had to check. Okay, next question. Have I been to the places that are marked? Or how many of the places, I'm, I'm assuming I've been to some places that are marked on a weird map. You certainly have. But I've been to a lot of places, so. You've been to a lot of places. The three that I can tell you, you've definitely been on this map. In Sheliax, marked with a star, you have been to the Barrowwood and the Whisperwood. The Whisperwood also has this half moon and a red sun. Does it, it has a star, a moon, and a sun? Yeah. Or, okay. The Whisperwood. Star, half moon, sun. The Barrowwood just has a star. Next place you would have been that has a star. There's a little village in Kionan. I don't know if you've been there. It's entirely possible. You can decide. It's called Eragis, and it has a star next to it. Okay. And then the other place that you have been that is marked with a moon is Mirani Forest. Are the moons all half moons or moons crescents or whatever? Moons. Okay. It's, it was in the where? In Mirani Forest, where your other mom is from. Mirani Forest. So in the crying, the crying leaf it's, or it's near? Not, it's not, it's like in the middle of the forest. They aren't necessarily like, it seems to be a marker of a region more than like a specific spot in the forest. Okay. But Crying Leaf is also in that forest. Yes, yes, it is. Okay, got it. And those are the places that I have been to. That I know of, yes. All right. That works. Ember Ember is going to whine a little bit and like pad against the wall a few times. It is worth saying that Um and Professor Z, there's places you've been to on this map as well. Um, marked with a star and a half moon, is a uh, Verdoran forest where you met Oriana in Taldor, and the Andoran half of this forest is is marked that way as well. Also, is the region in Andoran where you met Jemrin after meeting Oriana, marked with a star and a half moon, and Professor Z. You see the star in the Bakar forest in Molthrun. Ember pads at the wall. So, Professor, since you've co-authored papers with Oriana, could you shed some light on what these symbols mean? Can't wait to hear what bullshit he creates. No, I was gonna, I was gonna go the other direction and say I've never been to this house. I'm not sure why we're coming in here. I mean, the times I met Oriana were, were in the field, and then, you know, I would stop by the bakery every day and we would discuss things there. But is this Oriana's house? So in, in all your time collaborating, you've never been to Oriana's house? So in all the time we just spent talking about how we were going to Ember's house, you didn't realize this was <laughs> Oriana's house? Wait, sorry, that, I need to put that into. So all of the time we were just talking about, et cetera. And that's not to say that I don't believe you that this is Oriana's house. I just, I've never seen this map. It's clearly of the, the region and probably has something to do with some of her research. But when, when we collaborated, I never, I never studied this map. Okay, but in your own knowledge as a, as a researcher in this field and a co-author of a paper with Oriana, what, is, what does this mean? Would you like to roll something to know what it might mean? Yeah, so I can try and infer what it might mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, okay. Yeah, just, just roll me an intelligence check. Intelligence check? Yeah, actually, oh. can you give me a secret knowledge nature? Secret knowledge nature? Yeah. That was better than your intelligence check, which is fortunate for you. What is Ember gonna do? Oh, Ember was going to get off the chair and like pad over to Temerity and whine and look very sad and say, I think it is broken. 
Is is there a hidden is there a compartment here? Maps are supposed to tell you where to go, but the map does not speak. I understand. You see, usually I've never I've never seen personally a map that can speak, but it, you know, magic, who knows. Usually one can read the map. Read. Uh, yes. I cannot read. Well, you learned how to speak. Maybe we can teach you how to read. I I know, personally, I know many languages, and whichever one you would like to learn, I would be happy to attempt to teach you. I like to learn new tricks. You gotta, let, it perks up a little bit. Let, let's put that on the list. Amber, do you know... Wait, no, let me not ask him first. Are there, does it look like there's books around or anything that'll, that we can refer to to know what this shit means? There are books. Fortunately, Professor Zhu's memory is going to kick in. This map seems very connected to what you know that the Oriana did as her research. It seems likely to you that these are locations of various ruins and spots along ley lines, as she explained to you. And that there's some sort of system that marks where she has been, where she might find more things to explore, and where she needs to go. I guess I would express that as, so you can quite obviously see from this map that it's an archaeological map and that you can find the ley lines that are traveling through this point and this point. And, you know, I know that it's like quite an important foundational technique just to mark the places that you've been and that you wish to return to and where there are specific spiritual connections. Ember is going to go over to Professor Z and his tail is going to wag a lot. Like, the map speaks to you. Will you help me? Of course. What are you looking for? I want to go to the places on the map that the map tells you places to go. There are quite a few of them. We could visit any number of these archaeological sites. I'm sure we could have a fascinating dig at each one. Let's go then. We should go. So you said you, you met Oriana in the field then. Which of these places have you already been to? That's a fact that I don't remember. The Car Forest in Molthoon. Okay. So I will point to that one on the map and say I've been to the Bacar Forest. Okay, well this one's got a, a star, right? So what do you think the star means based on you being there? Well, this is of course, you know, standard practice in archaeology to, to label all of the spots where, where you might find archaeological ruins. Yeah, so I'm asking what does the star mean? What does that label mean? Probably some ruins there. Each archaeologist might have a slightly different system that they use to keep track of everything they've seen. This isn't, of course, my cataloging. My cataloging would be in much more detail of the findings. Yeah, but you've, you've co-collaborated on papers, so clearly these labels must mean something, right? If you're saying it's obvious that these are markings. So I was just, just asking you, what's the difference between the star and the, and the moon? I think I'm feeling a little antagonized by Oom. She's got it in for you, bro. At this moment, the door opens. You hear someone, someone's footsteps, and then thieves. Oh my goodness. And what sounds like little footsteps running for the door. Do I recognize the smell of this individual? Yeah, this, this individual smells very familiar. I would like to bound after this individual. Okay. And lick them you manage to bowl over uh, a gnome who, who looks fairly young, actually. And let me find his description. Yes, he has bright green eyes and very vibrant orange hair, like a, like a fall leaf. He also sort of smells of flower and something that's a little fermented and maybe something sweet. And you lick his face and he's going to say, oh, oh, oh my... It is you. It's it's Amber, isn't it? Oh, and he's he's gonna scratch behind your ears. I will be very happy. We're so sorry to to intrude. It's just that since Ember said this was his home, we thought it'd be all right if we we went in with him. Oh, I I didn't know he had a key. I will smile very charmingly. 
They opened the door. Ember will say helpfully. <laughs> I don't think Ember understands the concept of a lock. And he really wanted to be home. I apologize. Locks are put on things to make them harder to open. You do talk. He will say. <laughs> she wasn't just... She wasn't just... Having a... a hallucination. He talks. He talks. Oh my goodness. I can talk. I can do many he, things. He... He will continue uh, scratching behind your ears. He's hot. Does he have a fever? I think that's just his normal temperature. I'm Tavadojan Celestine. This is my my aunt's home. And this is Ember and Professor Z. What are you and your contraption doing here? Oh, welcome. A good to see a familiar face. Yes, there's been quite the strange goings on and I just, you know, I, I figured I had to come with it with all of these folks to to see what was going on because you know I still haven't finished that paper about the archaeological ruins and I just you know I wanted to understand the strange happenings here and it seems that Ember has some connection. I'm I'm not quite sure yet, but I'm still sort of working it out, scratching more things. Oh, I and, and and who are the two of you? This is this is friend Elf. Tiefling, and this is friend gnome. Ember will say helpfully. Temerity Vane, it's a pleasure to meet you. You have a lovely home. We have many, many questions for you. Temerity? And this is friend Tiny Dragon. I am not supposed to chase friend Tiny Dragon. And and your name? And the dragon's name? Hi, I'm Oom, and this is Nami. We actually just got reunited with Ember too, so maybe together we can we can piece what's been happening. Yes, come in, come into this and sit down somewhere comfortable. I'm Tavidojan, but you can call me Tavi. And I just need a, a bit of grog from the kitchen. And he's gonna go pour himself a drink and, and we'll serve you too if you would like it as he invites you to sit down in the parlor area. I'm gonna sit on the floor because the chairs we'll don't do fit me, presumably. There's one human elf-sized chair. Very well, I will take it. And the rest are very gnome-sized. Gnome Ember will do the thing where he, like, sits down and for, like, half a second and then stands back up <laughs> in that dog way of just, like, needs to keep being told to sit down. So, Katoro was telling me you all somehow, the two of you, know, know Ember, and of course, I know the professor here from the bakery and from my aunts. So uh, let's try to work everything out. What do you want from us? And how did he come back here? And what can I tell you? Remember, we'll just say, I came to find Mira. And how did you come to, to be able to talk? I can talk now. We're still not very clear on the, the how of it, just that it happened. Last time I saw him was over a year and a half ago now, and you're all, you don't look as well as you used to, Ember. You're, what's happened to you? I met some bad people. They were mean. But Temerity saved me. That's very good of you. Well, he's a very good boy. I yes. am. So, where would you like to begin? That's a great How question. How much time do you got? The rest of the day. I believe we well we have several questions do you know where mira is amber would would dearly like to return this ring to her yes it will make her sad but i want her to have it is that oriana's ring he like puffs out his chest <laughs> oh what a very 
very good dog to carry it all this way. It will make her very happy. Temerity tied it to my neck so that I didn't have to carry it in my mouth. Oh, that's very good of you, Temerity. You, you carried it in your mouth for, for how long? It has been a lot of time. I can imagine. Where my auntie Mira I could is. count. Oh, you, you could count? I was going to say, I could count the days, but I was not outside most of the time. So, a lot of time. Sounds like you have a lot to tell me, now that you can tell us things. My auntie Mira is not here right now, but mm. she might be back soon, or... Not soon. It, it it depends. She's you see, she and Oriana were bonded in the way two married people are, and so she could feel it when when Auntie Oriana died, and she went looking for her, and took off to the Whisperwood all by herself, even though we begged her not to. And somehow she convinced these people there to go in with her and and find Auntie Oriana's body, and she did, but not ember and so well all around there were these tracks and evidence of a great fight the place ori went and my auntie mira well she says love compels her to find the people who killed auntie oriana and bring them to justice now it's i begged her not to do it but she spent months stewing on it and then one day she took the very best rolling pin in the whole bakery and her knitting needles and she set out to another one of these sites to see if if these people were searching for what auntie oriana was and so she's determined to track them down however she can and she goes away for a while she comes back regroups goes away for a while comes back so I don't know exactly how long this one's going to take. She could be back in a couple of weeks. It could be months. But she will be in touch soon. It's been about a month since I've heard from her, and she always writes within that time frame. So any day now, we could be getting a message. Do you, do you know in what direction she was last headed towards? difficult to say. She sometimes changes her mind about these things. Uh, she wanted to connect with some people at the edge of the Whisperwood who she thought might be able to give her information about whoever was there. So she's gone back to check with them and then she rumbled about going to Andorin to see someone named Jemrin. And I don't know exactly where she'll be. But she will say when the message comes where she is and then we can find her yes something like that then we should wait for the message i can wait i am good we might have a potential lead for her in green gold That's where I got to, that's where I got Ember from, right? Oh, okay. I was just skimming really quickly. Where was it that, where was it? Iadara. Oh, shit. Okay. Then that's where I will say. We might have a potential lead for her in Iadara. Uh, where is that? It's in Keonan, right? Yeah. The capital of Keonan. Yeah. It's, it's the capital of Keonan. Elves? Well, elves don't go around killing gnomes. That seems a bit far-fetched. Well, it, it was an elf that I liberated Ember from. Oh my. Awful elf. We don't like that one. This is quite a lot. Well, 
I, I don't want her going anywhere alone. My Auntie Mira is a baker. And, well, given I haven't known her her whole life, uh, she seems to actually know how to use a sword, which I never knew before. She went and got one. But I don't want her going anywhere alone or fighting anybody alone. It's, it's too dangerous after what happened to Auntie Ori. But she has been? She has been going alone? Yes, well, I, I can't stop her. She's stronger than I am. But I don't want her to do it. I see my my mistake. If she's been corresponding with with Zemrin, maybe we could try to contact uh, him as well. Zemrin's always been a, a good friend to Oriana, and so hopefully there might be a, a way of of talking to Mira together with with Zemrin. How do you know them all? It's, it's been quite a while, but our, our paths crossed as we were researching different things. That's actually where I first met Ember. It's, I guess it's kind of a long story for that, but there's just been, it's, it's just seeing Ember again, it, it's just a, really difficult to, to say. But just we'll just know that that Oriana was a good friend to me, and and if I can do anything to help with this, that's that's really all all the reason why I'm here. Roll diplomacy. He considers it, and he he really seems affected. Tears up a little bit, and then gets a, a huge lacy handkerchief out and swaps at his eyes. And thank you, that means so much. Professor, do you have any insight into what might be going on? I, I know you met Auntie Oriana when you were out and about in the world. I, I don't know what I would say at this point. Like, It's okay, you don't have to say anything. You can look confused. Okay, just look confused. Okay. The professor was talked to by the map. The professor knows many things. The map? You have an interest in the map? Oh. The map tells you where to go. What do you all want to know about the map? I, I, I can tell you some things. Everything you know. Oh. Well, the stars... The stars are where Auntie Oriana has been, and that she found her work had value in these places. Um, the moons, and some of them are also with a star, are places she's been and she wants to go back to. And just a moon means she's never been there, but she wants to go there. The red sun is what Auntie Mira painted on the place where Auntie Oriana died and everywhere she's been since then. There's a whole list of these places that I will send you in the Discord chat. That's very helpful. Thank you so much for for sharing that with us. Okay, so Esther, is there looking at the map? Are there a lot of places that she wants to go but hasn't been yet? Yes. She wants to go but hasn't been. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That she's never been to, and that she has been and wants to go back to one, two, another kind of like big conglomerate. Three. So there's there's too much information for us to narrow down her where she could maybe be within a few. Yeah. Right. So these these stars and moons are Oriana's system. The red mm -hmm. sun is Mira's system. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, but. Yes, okay, got it. There is a lot of information here. It sounds like Mira is likely at the edge of the Whisperwood, getting some information from people, or she has made her way to Andorin to visit this individual named Jemrin. Okay. You say you can't be sure where she went. She doesn't tell you anything about where she's going before she goes. That sounds 
risky, no? Well, I don't think she wants me getting in uh, trouble well, with her. I mean, that's why she tells me roughly where she's going, but... Okay, well, I, I suppose the question we have here is... Well, well, the question separate of what kind of interesting things they must be finding in these places is... What should we do? Do... I, I assume, Ember, that you want to give it to her directly. You don't want to leave it here and then leave. Do you wish to? I would, I would like to find Mira, but if Mira will send a message, then we can wait for the message. Then I want to go to the places that my master wanted to go. And I want to complete what she was doing. Well, okay. Tavi? That brings us to the question of what was she doing? She would, I know this, she would go to the places that are old and she would stare at the walls and then she would make scritches in her book. I can do this. And he will, he will try to find like a piece of parchment and a quill and attempt to like make scritches on, on a piece of parchment. It's gonna be hard to get ink in that quill, my buddy. I don't think he knows. Okay. I have so many questions to ask you, Ember. But Auntie Oriana's research, first of all. It, it's a little beyond me. I'm just a, a guy who loves baking. She loved this natural world. And when it would go out of balance, that was very distressing to her. She found that there's these things called ley lines. Again, I, I don't know much about them. You'd have to go to one of the wizard's towers or some of the professor's friends could tell you much more, I'm sure. They carry some kind of power. And from what I understand, people in ancient times would, would build on the focal points of them or, or just build on top of these, these magical lines of power. It can come from a lot of places and it can leak through and sometimes the ancients knew how to seal it all up but since those technologies and ways of knowing are lost these sites that they build they, they have more leaks and when that happens well things can come through or it can just throw off the the balance of a place so auntie oriana would go around trying to set these places to right and she had some grand theory of how it was all connected, but it was really above my head, if I'm being honest. I would kind of zone out when she'd go into it. She thought maybe they were all connected. Some kind of portals, great power. It seemed a little scary, and when I was young, I would get bad dreams from it, you can imagine. So I don't remember a lot of the details. But, but she did meet the professor at one of these places. Hmm. Quite the meeting, I'm told. M meet for the first time? Yeah, it wasn't. We met in the field. Exactly. That's what his type calls it, the field. So wh why was it quite the meeting? I'm, I'm interested to hear what happened. Oh, well, we were just both. I'm actually, I'm actually interested in hearing what, what Tabby has to say about the first meeting, if you don't mind. Well, I wasn't there. Well, I meant from, from Mira, because if you heard her saying it was quite the, or oh, sorry, uh, she, Oriana. She wasn't there. It was just Auntie Oriana and the professor here. D did, did Auntie Oriana say what happened when she met the professor or why it was noteworthy? Yeah, she said he was fending off a bunch of these creatures as best he could. And it was a situation that called for a druid. Many situations do, in, in my experience. Research could be a quite, a quite a perilous activity, you know. Ember was there for that meeting, right? Ember the, was when, not um, there when Professor, Professor Z, Z met Oriana. No, oh, okay. it was not. This was before okay. they got Ember. Before my time. Oh, wow. So who are the uh, individuals chasing you, Professor? 
That was quite some time ago. When you're out doing research in the field, sometimes uh, you just run into some fey folk or, you know, other creatures. And it, it gets, you know, it gets a little bit dicey at times. But I, I persevered and, and really, Oriana and I went on to have a great collaboration really discovering these ruins. I will defend. You don't recall the people that were trying to hurt you? Well, I'm not sure. I mean, do you not have the occasional encounter with fey folk in, in the wild? And it just, sometimes it goes a little poorly and you you get through it. And sometimes that's just kind of the way it goes. I'm not sure. I didn't really stop to, to get to know them, if, you, if that's what you're wondering. And sometimes when you meet them in the woods, you have a big party and you get really drunk. And, you know, the Fae, it's a great time, but you you just have to be careful. It sounds like maybe they didn't take to you. Maybe it's because you weren't born in the woods. I was. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Well, I do have to say I was out there on the work journey, so I wasn't really uh, there to be distracted by a a Fae party. I was really looking for whatever I could find in the ruins. The thing is, Professor... Everything in life, there's something to learn from, don't you believe? There are many things to learn from, but personally, I'm really invested in discovering things which will have the, the greatest impact on our, our gnomish society here in Brussels. I see, I see. What's his name again? Tavi, you said that her theories went over your head. Does she have a manuscript? She had a, a notebook, but it was with her when she went, and if it's still around, my Auntie Mira has it. She has all these resources in in that room. You could go through them, see if there's anything interesting there. It's it's not really my thing, and honestly, it's a little depressing for me to try to look too much into it. But you're welcome to. GM question. Do I have a way of corresponding with Jemrin? There's certainly good old-fashioned sending messages. You could... I, I don't think... What's... What's your bloodline? Draconic. Draconic. And you have arcane spells? Yes. It's more likely Jemren has a way to communicate with you. You do know you could probably pay a lot of money somewhere to send Jemren a very direct magical message, but way over your current budget. So your Can best I- bet would be like sending a, a carrier pigeon falcon. Crow. Crow. <laughs> Is that the way that Mira probably was corresponding with him? Probably. Okay. I mean, she Got does it. own a very successful bakery, so she might have the coin to, to send a message more directly, but... I think the GM just called you poor. <laughs> the GM just called you level two. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That sounds about right. Okay, so... I put to y'all, I guess, not in character, but out of character. Should we just hang out and read all these books or what? I'm I'm ready to Uh, read all these books, but I'm also ready to, to, you know, go look for some ruins. So uh, that's all y'all. Sounds like we should probably stick around. Ember obviously is not going to be terribly useful in the reading of books. There's also the Festival of Flight coming up, which could be interesting and more pertaining to Professor Z's work. Yeah, I think it's going to depend on where Ember waits. If Ember's going to wait around here, then I'll totally read some books. If Ember's going to wander into the Festival of Flight, we're going to see things fly. <laughs> Ember, Ember is not particularly one to fly, so... He's probably going to spend most of his time around the house, I would say, unless something calls for him to move. Sure, you don't want to fly? Yeah. So oh, the, man. The festival you would be a flight. very unhappy flying dog. It starts in a couple of weeks. You get the vibe oh, okay. that, like, oh, wow. it might take that long for Mira's message to come through or for her to show back up. So you have you have some time to spend in this town if you want to. And some of you have various research interests. You know that Brasselwork is a place of innovation and a lot of scholarly work of, of many different kinds, both like practical and, and artisanal and lore-based. So 
there could be things for you to do in this town to figure out your next steps. And to make some money, which yeah. will not hurt. Tavi. Yes. Would it be possible for us to maybe look through all of these books and papers that are here? Definitely. Definitely. Why don't you do that? I'll make us all a big lunch. We can talk mm -hmm. more eating lunch together. How about it? That sounds wonderful. I'm, I'm gonna start reading. Oh, perfect. Go I'm ahead. We should leave it there for today. Okay. And you can regroup over lunch next time. That sounds great. We can start with like rolls on what you might discover as you as you read things and such. That sounds really good. We did it, lads. We did it. We did it. Congratulations. Go us. Go yeah. us. That was really fun. So, question to wind down for today. Ooh. Oh, okay. What was your favorite moment of today's play? Hmm. I was really enjoying Oom and Professor Z's banter. I also really enjoyed Buster getting stuck in a dense... <laughs> In an alley. Yeah, I'm eager to see what hitting him actually did in the long run. We're gonna be we're gonna be just like walking down the street and he's gonna explode and it's gonna be a TPK on like episode three. I am not yet resistant to fire damage. Please do not explode. I think Oom's antagonism, which I didn't expect, is the best part for me. Maybe that's not Alex's perspective. <laughs> Having been under the microscope. That's my, that might be my, my perspective, but maybe not Professor Z's perspective. Ooh, I have a question. Yes. How big is a pseudo dragon supposed to be? About one feet, 10 inches is what I was approximating and about oh, like okay. seven so pounds. Actually pretty large then, yeah. Uh, okay. But yeah, that's from head to tail. So it's probably like the actual like body is probably like, you know, like a foot, I guess. So it's like a cat, it's like cat sized? Yeah, it's a like cat size. Okay. You could wear it like a scarf. Does it fly? It can fly. Yeah. You could wear it like a scarf. I'm only like, you know, close to three feet, under three feet tall. So I'm sure it, uh, it's okay. actually not the greatest exactly. feeling. <laughs> <laughs> a very heavy scarf for you? Or a very large hat. <laughs> do they do they fly next to you or walk near you or like? I'm yeah. So yeah, usually they'll like, they'll, they basically are kind of like a pseudo dragon. So you, you basically have to take uh you know, flight because it can fly. <laughs> and so it, it, right now, Nami can uh, fly, can has dark vision, can speak common usually. I'm assuming because Nami would prefer to understand what people are saying. But other than that, would probably speak draconic around others, depending on the day. And what was the other one? I don't know, those are probably the main independent. ones. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah, independent. Just yeah. because character reasons this was a lot of fun y'all it was i'm very excited to, to see what happens <laughs> yeah too. this is cool i also right. want to fight things which is fun <laughs> because you know i'm playing a very fighty build <laughs> there will be opportunity to fight things i mean um and professor z might go at it so ember would have a lot of difficulty with that because sure. he doesn't know what to do when good people fight good people <laughs> The marinade will tell you, you eat some popcorn. <laughs> yeah, he will always eat popcorn. I, I'm assuming it wouldn't come to fisticuffs, but you never know. <laughs> Same. Well, I'm going to, before I stop our recording, thank our audience for tuning in. Thank you for going on this first chapter of the story journey with us. We are so excited to be playing this game and telling this story together. And a reminder, you can follow us on Twitter at Chromythica. Until next time.